Hey everybody, it's Justin Watches Movies here with a special video for you guys. It has been exactly four years now since I have uploaded my first video and started this channel. I started this channel on November 16th, 2012 and I uploaded a video for my iPhone showcasing some Blu-rays I picked up. And at that time I really established myself as a person who really liked to talk about Blu-rays, Blu-ray hauls, Blu-ray unboxings, and then and then I kind of transitioned into movie reviews, and that's what I mainly do now. And even though the movie reviews haven't been on board with who like to watch my Blu-ray videos, I still really love what I do here. Along the way, I have met a lot of people that I have loved talking to, if it's via Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, whatever it may be, I have established a lot of friendships along the way. I have learned a lot of things like editing and lighting and different things like that. And even though my channel hasn't been too successful in the last year or so, I still really like what I do and if I like what I'm doing, why stop? So I posted a poll on OpinionStage.com about some videos you guys would like for me to do. I had four options and you had to pick one. It was a top 20 favorite films of all time, reaction to some of my first videos, Funko Pop haul or Blu-ray collection video and the winner out of 101 votes I believe with 29 votes was my top 20 films of all time. Low key, I was hoping that was the one because I've been excited to talk about some of my favorite films of all time. Now, before we get into this list, guys, this is my list. This is some of my favorite films. You might not see Citizen Kane or The Godfather or Shawshank Redemption in here. I really like those films, but these are my personal favorite films of all time. These are what I consider to be the top 20 best films of all time. You might have a different list. This is my list and I wanted to get that out of the way before we jump into this video. So I have 20 movies that I picked out that I think are the best movies and I'm going to give a very short explanation of what I like about them. Let's kick off this list with number 20. So coming in at number 20 is... Jurassic Park took some years for me to really get into. I watched this film a lot growing up and I've honestly watched more of the Lost World and Jurassic Park 3 more than the first one, but this first one is so euphoric. It is it is a stunning piece of work. I, I love the direction, I love the camera angles, the set location. All of this movie is is mind-blowing. It is stunning. The animatronics for the dinosaurs are perfect for the time that they handled this film. And the soundtrack just blows my mind and it just gets me into the mood so much and watching certain scenes when they're filming and they have the soundtrack like I said it's so euphoric and just it just it gives me goosebumps coming in at number 19 is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World is such a fun movie. I, I remember reading the mangas before I actually went and saw the movie and I really love reading those books and coming out of Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, I had such a fun time with this movie. This movie is such a fun movie I, between from the action that is filmed so perfectly to the comedic moments from uh, Michael Sarah to Chris Evans, Anna Kendrick. So many people are in this movie and they just get into the role so much. As someone who really likes games and retro games like Legend of Zelda and Super Mario Bros. And I've seen the little tidbits of classic video games just brought out the nerd in me. This movie is a non-stop thrill ride that just makes me laugh and is just, the action is just so fun. Coming in at number 18 is... I'm a big fan of James Bond and growing up Goldfinger was always my favorite movie. There was just something about the villain Goldfinger that really intrigued me. I think that they did a great job handling his obsession with gold and he really seemed like a sinister villain. And I love how Sean Connery just was so suave and was so stylistic and just really seemed like a gentleman and what James Bond really is. And to top it all off, the girl in here, Pussy Galore, just, I was like, Really, that's an odd choice for a name. Coming in at number 17 is... Now Adam Sandler has been not very good lately, but Billy Madison to me is his best movie and it is hilarious. The concept is ridiculous and it matches Adam Sandler's tone. 
And it matches Adam Sandler's acting ability. It's ridiculous. He is very over the top. He loves to have fun with this movie. He loves to do these voices and just goof off. And this movie allowed for him to do that. He was playing a man-child, someone who had to go back to elementary school, and his behavior, his characteristics, matched this storyline. I thought this was a hilarious film, and the concept just worked with Adam Sandler's abilities to bring humor to the audience. Coming in at number 16 is... The Wolf of Wall Street is one of the craziest films I have ever seen. I remember seeing this in theaters and sitting for two hours and 59 minutes, just my eyes glued to the screen. This was a film that did not let go and just captured you from the beginning shot to the very end and did not let you go and it's a non-stop crack drug thrill ride that is just, whoo! I had to like just just calm down for a minute after watching that film and every time I watch that I'm just like yeah I want to go to Wall Street I want to sell things and I want to be like Leonardo DiCaprio let's do it now this film just got me so excited and just pumped me up so much and Martin Scorsese's direction with this movie is just it's near perfect and he just makes the film a non-stop thrill ride so many rushes throughout and it just it's quickly, quickly, quickly paced, and it's three hours long, three hours, and for it to be that quickly paced, whew, I don't know what he was doing, but he did something good. Coming in at number 15 is... Now, some people might be surprised to see Fast Five, uh, a Fast and Furious movie in the, this list, but Fast Five is my favorite Fast and Furious movie, and I'm a big Fast and Furious fan. My family grew up on cars, and my grandfather was a motorcyclist, and this movie was for my family. We watched this movie a lot growing up, and um, when I got of age to uh, have my own opinion about movies and go to movies on my own, I saw Fast Five. To this day, the Fast Five end sequence with the song by Don Omar and the crew getting together and realizing that they're safe is one of my favorite scenes in all movies. I just get so excited and so happy watching that end sequence. And I search Don Omar, Don Zan Kudrow so many times and I just get so happy. And I think that this movie was so action packed and I loved seeing like the whole crew together from Fast and the Furious and Too Fast, Too Furious, Tokyo Drift, Fast and Furious, all together under one movie, and it brought out the best out of everybody, from Ludacris to Tyrese Gibson to Paul Walker, rest his soul, and Vin Diesel. It was just so cool to see all of these actors together on the big screen and do what they love to do, is to talk about cars and race and steal money, and it was just so much fun. Coming in at number 14 is... first time I actually ever saw The Shining was in theaters and uh, this movie is quite possibly one of the most disturbing films I've ever seen. It is so, so, so suspenseful. Stanley Kubrick did an amazing job handling his camera, shifting to the corners and the suspense of you don't even know what's around that corner still terrifies me. The scene where Danny is just on his tricycle and he's around the first corner and the other corner and I'm just like... And then he gets to the twins and that sequence with the twins and Danny's face is just... It is something truly horrifying and this whole movie is truly horrifying and it has a perfect build-up to the end sequence. Such great development for its characters and its setting and its storyline perfect pacing. I, I cannot describe how perfect The Shining is and how it, the direction is handled. Coming at number 13 is... Now, The Empire Strikes Back is a great film, but it is my least favorite of the original trilogy, and I know it's the most favorite for a lot of people, but The Empire Strikes Back for me, like I said, it's my least favorite, but it's on this list, so it's obviously a really good film. Seeing Luke Skywalker train with Yoda and his friends like Leia and Han traveling through the galaxy, 
and seeing more of Darth Vader and getting that un getting that reveal of Darth Vader that he is Luke's father. Just, I remember seeing it for the first time, I was like, what? That is crazy. But this film managed to have a lot more action and a lot more story to it. A lot more was at stake in this movie compared to the first one. And you just really felt in this group of friends, uh, Han and Leia and Luke, that they were... That there was this urgency for them to take down the Empire and so they can save the galaxy. The Empire Strikes Back has one of the best reveals ever. It is out of left field and just works so perfectly with this storyline. Coming in at number 12 is... I am not ashamed or scared to tell you guys that The Princess Bride is a beautiful film. It is a very... Oh, it is so charming. It is quite sad too. It's not like a sad, sad film, but I just watch this film and cry because it is so beautiful. It is the most beautiful film I've ever seen, guys. I love The Princess Bride. I've seen this movie in theaters a couple times through Regal Cinemas, and I own it on Blu-ray, obviously. Um, but this film, but this film is just—it's cheesy and cliche, but that's the point of the story. A grandfather telling his grandson on a sick day of school, the story of the Princess Bride. And the young boy's like, eh, that's gross, kissing, love, and the grandfather is just having a lot of fun with it. And it's meant to be cliche, it's meant to be cheesy, and they just make it work so well. And the lines in here are, to this day, some of the best lines that I've heard, but I just really appreciated it that it was cliche, but it was meant to be cliche, and it embraced that, and it was just, such a beautiful thing to see. Coming in at number 11 is... Before Sunset is a beautiful film too. More beautiful than The Princess Bride. And I will never forget my first experience seeing Richard Linklater's Before Trilogy. This is my favorite trilogy of all time. Um, even over Star Wars. Uh, I love, love love Before Sunset. This film just knows how to latch on, but this film, this film just knows how to handle its characters, its dialogue, and its direction so well. Richard Linklater knows when to linger with his shots and just walk down in front of the actors as they're talking. This is real human nature, guys. This is where people are just having conversations and they're just talking and it's a very simple film of two people just talking and I can't express to you guys how beautiful this film is and I loved seeing these two people just grow more as a couple. We had the first film before sunrise but before sunset we get to see more of them and they're just more established and they still have that spark in their eyes after nine years or so and Ethan Hawke and Julie Deply, that's how you pronounce her name, Seeing them, you know, see each other for the first time, it was honestly like something in real life. And they, their acting, and the acting in here is just perfect. Alright, coming down to the top 10 best films of all time according to myself. And coming at number 10 is Return of the Jedi is um, my second favorite Star Wars film. Seeing Darth Vader overcome the Sith Lord and help his son out is truly a cinematic moment. Even though the Ewoks were kind of goofy and childish, I still loved seeing um, the different parts of the Star Wars universe. Coming in at number nine is... Back to the Future is just a, is such a fun movie. It has such a nicely developed script and I love Robert Zemeckis's direction with this film. Marty McFly is a very fun character and I love the relationship between Marty McFly and Doc Brown. They are ages apart but they still really understand each other. They're very different characters. Marty McFly is young and hip and Doc Brown tries to be hip at times but he's still very old and it just makes for a very fun relationship. There's so much care in the detail of the past and Marty McFly being there and the soundtrack is just, it's spine tingly. It is ranked up there with some of the best movie music ever. Coming in at number eight is... I remember seeing Superbad for the first time and, and I honestly did not want this movie to end. 
Superbad, I think, is the one film that I would want to continue for like a long time. I just want to see what happens after the end sequence. Superbad is one of the films that I could literally sit down and watch and laugh like it was the first time I've ever seen it. This film is over the top hilarious. It has such well-timed jokes from Jonah Hill, uh, Michael Cera, are so believable in their roles as friends. And it was so exciting to see them to act as friends. There is literally no downtime in this movie. This movie is always going. There is always something to laugh at. And I find the jokes to be hilarious. I'm someone who likes potty humor and jokes about body parts and things like that. And they touched all of that and they're there they talked about a lot of it and it was it was hilarious coming in at number seven is i'm sure you guys have heard the story of toy story 3 for me i skipped uh graduation parties i went and saw toy story 3 and cried this movie is it's emotional it is fun it is heartwarming it is everything this movie managed to do so much in just one movie it was Nostalgic because we got the second one year before this one. It managed to bring back characteristics of these toys so perfectly. It managed to have a great send-off, even though they're doing Toy Story 4. And it managed to make us cry and still make us laugh and smile and all these things. And it was so cute to see Woody just want to be by Andy's side and under and the toys and the other toys realizing that it's time to move on. And it was emotional uh, when Andy got rid of his toys. It's a story that uh, pretty much everybody goes through at their point in their life. They have toys, they're the best thing ever, and then you either keep some or you get rid of some. I still have a lot of my toys and, you know, it's something that a lot of people can relate to. Coming at number six is... Uh, Step Brothers, uh, Step Brothers, Step Brothers, Step Brothers is uh, the other film that I could sit down and watch and laugh like it was the first time ever. This is a movie starring Will Ferrell and John C. Riley as Step Brothers, and they act, and even though they're like 38, 39 years old, they act like they're 15, and it is perfect. Like Super Bad, this movie is always going. There is always something to laugh about. There is no downtime. This movie is so quotable. I have said things from Step Brothers so many times in my life. It's fun to see the development of John C. Riley and Will Ferrell because they absolutely hate each other in the beginning and then they still kind of hate each other and then they're best friends. And having them question each other to see if they're best friends, that was perfect. Coming in at number five is... Mad Max Fury Road is a non-stop thrill ride. This is one of the best action films I have seen. This movie, like some of the other movies I've talked about, does not let go. This movie is so fun. It is a quiet story. There is not much in its development of its characters and its story. It relies heavily on its visuals and its actions and they are stunning. I've done a review for Mad Max Fury Road before, but there, there's just so many cool things about this movie. It is stylish, it is euphoric, it is luminous with its colors, it is beautiful. Coming in at number four is... This is my favorite Star Wars film, the one that started it all. It's the one that sets up this whole entire universe. It's the first entire Star Wars film, and they couldn't have done better. They handled their characters so well setting up these relationships, spending time getting to know the plot. We get a lot of CP3O and R2-D2 and then with Luke Skywalker and it takes us some time to actually get into the plot and Luke Skywalker's purpose. And I really liked setting up uh, what a Jedi is and the lightsaber and the training and understanding Luke and why he wants to get out of where he lives. And then we get the introduction of Han Solo and he's a much different character from uh, Luke Skywalker, who's a very hip character. And seeing the relationship grow was amazing. This film is beautiful for being in the 70s. I think it was 79 that it came out. It's a perfect sci-fi film that knows its characters, it knows how to develop its storyline, has a sinister villain that we actually truly terrified. Coming in at number three is... 
Before Sunrise is 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 definitely the most beautiful film I've ever seen. It is hands down the most romantic film I've ever seen, the most beautiful film I've ever seen, and I've cried multiple times watching this film. It's not a sad film. No one dies in this film. It is just two people walking down the street, talking, and getting to know each other. Ethan Hawke asks Julie to apply if she wants to get off the train and just go about the day and just hang out with him for the day. And she goes and it blossoms into a relationship. If you guys have seen the trilogy, you know what happens. They get married. They have kids. It is a beautiful storyline uh, of just human nature and people talking. I you know, talked about this before Sunset, but this is the one where they meet each other and you know when you meet someone for the first time and you know that you really love them and you're really interested in that it really shows in this movie i think ethan hawk julia Ply, and richard linklater and i think richard linklater captured the innocence of these young adults and just being in the moment this movie is all about being in the moment it is a film that i just get so happy talking about even like hearing the title is just it just sends chills down my spine and i just absolutely love this film Coming in at number two is... Drive. You guys have heard me talk about Drive. Uh, my logo for this channel is Drive. My opening sequence is Drive. It's Drive, Drive, Drive. Drive is so cool. Drive is the uh, coolest movie I've ever seen. I love Ryan Gosling, hands down Ryan Gosling is one of my favorite actors working right now. And for him to have such a subtle role in Nicholas Winding Refn's movie Drive, um, people were like impatient. I remember seeing this movie in theaters and people being impatient because he just stared and smiled and nod. And people were like, come on, do something. I'm just like, this is beautiful. I think this is the coolest soundtrack I've ever heard. It's a euphoric uh, soundtrack. It is a great soundtrack, but this movie... I don't know, it's just, it's a very stylish movie. It's low on its plot, I'll admit that. There's not much to its plot. Um, but he's just such a mysterious character. You just want to know more about him. This movie is violent. It is charming. It's stylish. It's a very fine piece of art. And Drive will always be one of my favorite films. All right, guys. It is time for my favorite film of all time, the best film of all time. I'm literally in a glass box of emotion right now. Coming in at number one is... Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy is Justin Watch's movie's favorite film of all time. It is the funniest film of all time. It is the best film of all time. This is number one. Anchorman, for me, uh, personally, is my favorite film. I've seen this movie so many times, and it is one of the films that I could watch it and enjoy it like I've seen it for the first time. I laugh so much. I am someone who loves stupid humor, potty humor, and the characters in here were ridiculous. All four of them are stupid people, and I loved it. I remember watching this for the first time on New Year's Eve in 2004 and just laughing my butt off and my parents were like, this is stupid. We used to rent movies from Hollywood Video, we rented it and I was just in awe the first time I saw it. It knows what it wants to be. It wants to be stupid and the stupidity just is, it's there and it's hilarious. The characters all are the same, and they just work so well together. You know, I never would have thought that a ridiculous comedy about a news anchor could be so good. This is the perfect film. I have zero flaws with this film. I have talked about this film many times. At the end, I say, stay classy, from Anchorman. This movie has the best lines ever. I use them all the time. Uh, obviously, for my end sequence, like I said. It's just, it's it's so funny, and uh, I admire this film, every ounce of it, it is perfect. So, there you guys have it, are my top 20 films of all time. I know this list might not be similar to what you think, but these are the films I love, and you could tell how I talked about them. I, I love these films. Thank you for everybody who has supported my channel throughout the years, if it's given me ideas, 
or tips or help me with my thumbnails or editing or just talking to me, being a friend, being there, it truly means a lot. I'm so happy that I took the chance and took, and I was brave enough to open up my iPhone app and just start filming a video and it just took off and um, like I said, it's not very successful these last few years or months. Um, it's actually kind of dipped down. Uh, to be honest, if you guys have noticed, uh, don't get as many views or comments or likes as I would like uh, compared to some of my other videos, but I still stick to it. I still stick around. I'm here. Um, I'm having fun with it. I love going to the movies, coming back home, re reviewing the movie, editing it for you guys. I like editing. I like making the thumbnails. They're not the best, but I just like what I do and it doesn't feel like a job. Um, for me and if I can continue not feeling like a job and just having fun with it, I'm gonna do it um, So I do appreciate the people that have supported me throughout the years the people who continuously like and subscribe to my channel and watch my videos on a regular basis and comments and everything I, I do appreciate that. I really do. I don't say it a lot, but I really really do appreciate uh, the support and uh, The fans that I've had I've actually met people in real life that have watched my channel uh, and they said they're a fan and that's something that I could never you know take away from me It's something that I always remember. So thank you guys for everything you've done over these last four years I hopefully for another four years. We'll see what happens and another note if you guys would like to see a top 100 video uh, Broken up into different parts and give a comment down below and tell me if you guys would like that or give a like uh, I've always wanted to do it because I love talking about my favorite films um, so I might do that sometime in the future. So this is Just Watches Movies, and you stay classy, YouTube.